Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most intriguing features inside of Stable Diffusion right now, and that is the IP adapter, which I've covered briefly before, but I wanted to take a look at a different way of working with IP adapters. Now, what you're looking at is an image which I created using an IP adapter. I'm actually using a couple of IP adapt. Well, I've got four of them lined up here. I think one of them is an SDXL IP adapter. But what I'm doing here is using the IP adapters to control the development of an image. So we start off with this image here, the guy holding a gun or some kind of weapon. It's very steampunk. And what I found when we did that, and we were using an, an SD 1.5, Stable Diffusion 1.5 model, we ended up with this image here. And this was fairly typical of the images I was getting. So with 1.5, you quite often find that working with large image sizes and wide aspect ratios, it sometimes tries to fill the gaps in with things like patterns. Um, it doesn't always do exactly what you want it to do. And uh, the hat just ends up being a little bit wider than it should be. This is not always very logical. But what I found was that if I added a second render, a second, uh, a, a second diffusion using a prompt, an image prompt with a second IP adapter, it was possible to get the image to be a little bit more faithful to what I wanted. So I wanted this is all st steampunk and I wanted a steampunk hat on this woman that's part of the actual word prompt, but I wasn't getting exactly what I wanted, but using the IP adapter, I was able to get something a little bit better. Now, if you want to know about how to set this type of thing up and to get it all flowing in this kind of way, I do have a course and with that course, the Advanced Stable Diffusion will come for UI and SDXL. We cover IP adapters. So it's a very, it's a very up to date course. And in one of these sections, you'll find that we cover IP adapters and we're using these IP adapters for style transfer and stylish control net, as I call it. Um, if you want to join this course, if you are a member of the channel, I do have very substantial discounts that I like to give the members for the channel. You might want to try that out. I'll have a link in the description, but I'm going to explain to you how it all works. So we've got one sampler, one K sampler here using Comfy UI. Of course, it is the probably the uh, most up to date version of of stable diffusion for doing this type of uh, fairly complex workflow. So we've got the initial K sampler. This one is using uh, the Euler. And you can see it's a fit for stable diffusion 1.5. It's a fairly large image, 976 by 504. And usually things begin to fall apart when you go that large. Now the model, actual model I'm using is Lirio, which is, it's got an interesting story behind it, but it is probably one of the best ones alongside Dream Shaper. And I'm also using a 1.5 uh, clip vision model, which basically is the thing that understands what's inside the image. It's really amazing. And IP adapters, the ability they have to, to understand what's inside an image is, is pretty remarkable. So we created this image. The image was unsatisfactory. I blew it up and uh, you can see it a little bit easier here. It's a nice image. I like the overall composition, but I wanted to improve the detail, particularly the top hat. I wanted to give that a more reasonable, meaningful, less confounding shape. So I brought this in. I actually tried a number of different uh, uh, top hats. Top hats, they usually are not worn by women uh, and steampunk top hats, the AI model, the Lirio model might not have come across that before. So having an image just helps the model to understand the image from the point of view of the image. For whatever reason, this image worked really well. It's a good idea to collect a number of, oops, it's a good idea to collect a number of images and then try them out one after the other one. Uh, with Comfy UI, it is very fast. So it does give you the ability to experiment quite a lot. Now this was the result. You can see all the bells and whistles. You can see the steam. This is true steampunk. So here, cute 20 year old woman, color splash, photographic style, light fre freckles. You can see the prompt there and intense steam. I wanted lots and lots of steam inside of the image. Um, now with the latest version of 
with the latest version of Comfy UI, if you hit the middle mouse button, it allows you to move everything without worrying about what you're actually clicking on. And as you can see here, with the enlargements that we've got going on, we can see exactly what the AI has done. So this was a second prompt. Um, and this one, we're doing them in terms of one prompt and then uh, a second prompt. Um, so the, the first prompt will go with the first sampler and then the second prompt with the more advanced sampler. Uh, I've also got a mode sam modal sampler tone map noise test. This is a feature which allows you to control the how much color, how much color, how much contrast there is in, inside image. You can see the change in the color to tones. This is basically being introduced to some extent by this particular feature, which allows you to control the color, the contrast. Uh, and uh, this is something I discuss in one of the courses, which we cover where we cover some of the more advanced stuff. Uh, I think it's discussed in the mastery phase of the course. Now, what I want to do is to demonstrate something else. You might have seen, seen it very briefly where we use a uh, image. We don't use this guy here. We use a different image and it's this image. So I brought in the skull just to see what would happen. The results were really, really fascinating. So we had this image here that comes in with the skull. So that's all. The, that's the only thing that changed. The top hat is no longer quite as convincing, but we've lost the color completely. So the choice of the choice of image is a really important factor in the results you get. We lose color completely. We end up with this somewhat larger image. And then I did another one where we actually changed the text prompt. So that's this guy here. We changed the text prompt to 20 year old woman with skull like face and boom, we get this with the colors and quite a lot of the detail here. You can see there's a skull here. You can see the woman's face has become very Halloweeny and you can see the hat has also taken on it's taken on that feeling of being a bit of a skull, but you want to test the weight to see what the weight, what, what weight works best for whatever you're trying to do. Um, and I wanted to actually go a little bit further. So we're going to try a different uh, skull image. The skull image here is cool, but it's black and white. We've, we're lacking color. Let's go and see if we can get something a little bit more colorful. And I'm going to go probably to Adobe stock or to Canva to get an image. Uh, with again with the skull theme, but this time maybe with more color. So here it is, and there it is. We I added this very colorful skull. I think this is from uh, Adobe Express or something. And uh, with this one, it gave us a very different looking image. Let me see if I can just pull it up. Um, you can see without any change in any of the other details, either the prompt or the uh, the seed we get this, we get a really, really colorful image with the woman's face becoming this Halloween like skull and uh, the hat also becoming very, very attractive with the skulls, with the with the flowers and the skull. And you can see it a little bit more clearly here, but nothing else changes. Everything else remains the same. And then for the next one, which I think is the last one, the, oh, we got this one. This is the Hell Rider. So we use this image here. Uh, I, this one comes from Adobe again, and I wanted something which was both masculine and also colorful, but with lots of character. So you can see some of these elements here. These are what you quite often find in steampunk. You've got the glasses, the goggles. Those are a good steampunk element. And you can see the, res the results are amazing here. The, the hat, the hat has turned entirely, entirely into this uh, amazing structure. I don't know, goggles with light coming out of them. And then the face of the girl has turned completely into, in, into skull. So it's really, really figured out what I wanted here. We've also got these elements uh, with the with the kind of steampunk element to it or the I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you call that, but it's changed the entire image so that it looks very different. And I think this is the kind of thing which might be useful if you're playing uh, Halloween ideas and you want to maybe combine some existing idea with another idea. The software is very good at uh, combining things together and uh, play around with the different. There are different adapters, IP adapters. Unfortunately, uh, only one for SDXL. Like I say, this we've got more information about this going on inside the course. If you want to learn more about how it all fits together. 
but I think this is a really good way of working creatively using the ability of the software and the models to understand what's going on inside of images. So guys, that is it for this video. Hope you found some of that useful. If you did, hit the like button, maybe subscribe for more videos, maybe join the channel membership as well for a few perks.